And go ahead and be seated, please. Noting everyone's presence back in the courtroom. Mr. Holloman, are you intending to call any other witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, I have no more witnesses. Very well. Yes, we do need another minute. We weren't aware they were going to call other witnesses, so Ms. Burnt and uh, Ms. Henry went upstairs to get our uh, witness information. No objection. This witness will be very brief as far as my direct goes. Very brief. Will they be returning directly to the courtroom? Yes. We'll just wait. Council approach bench. We don't leave this on the record. Arnold, do you have that instruction regarding the defendant testifying? Yes. We'll approach the bench with that, please. Noting Ms. Burnt has returned to the courtroom. Counsel, are we now ready to, to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Please have the jury return to the courtroom. Noting the jurors return to the courtroom, the defense may call its next witness. The defense calls Taylor Strong. Please raise your right hand, please. Ms. Blair, there are the testimony of Dr. Andrews, the law student, and nothing but the case will be done. Please be seated. <coughs> we could just slide up the microphone a little bit. <coughs> Look in the direction of the jury so that they can hear you. 
Introduce yourself to the jury. Your name, please. My name is Taylor Strong. Okay, and spell that for the court reporter. T-A-Y-L-O-R-S-T-R-A-W-N. Are you familiar with someone known as Michael Bargo? Yes, sir. How are you familiar with Michael Bargo? Um, he's my ex. Ex-boyfriend, yes. Directing your attention to April the 17th, 2011. Did you have plans with Michael Bargo that particular evening? Yes, sir. When had he contacted you about those plans? Um, the last time I talked to him was Friday before that. And what were those plans? He was supposed to come, out, come hang out with me on Sunday. Approximately what time? Uh, we didn't decide a time. He was just going to come over whenever. One, one second. <coughs> I'm having trouble hearing you, and the jurors may also. Just pull forward and speak directly into that microphone, please. Let me backtrack to where I was. Um, what time? Yeah, okay, good. Thank you, Judge. Did you have plans as to what time he was to come over Sunday? No, sir. And you talked to him on Friday, you said? Yes, sir. Right. Did he ever show up? No, sir. Did he ever call? I don't remember. I don't think he called that day. Ten of the witness for cross-examination, Your Honor. Cross-examination. No questions, Your Honor. May this witness be excused, counsel? Yes. Ms. Burke? Yes, Your Honor. You're excused. You may step down. The defense may call its next witness. Defense rest. Counsel approach the bench, please. Members of the jury, the defense having rested its case, the state of Florida has an opportunity to present rebuttal testimony. The state may call its next witness. Your Honor, the state calls Kyle Hooper. You hear? Yes, ma'am. One, one second. Actually, members of the jury, there's a matter I'm going to need to address outside of your presence. If you'll put those notepads face down, please, and retire from the courtroom. This should not be a lengthy recess. You may approach the bench.
if we're going to bring him in before the jury returns. Sir, if you'll come up to the witness stand, please. Can 
you take his handcuffs off? Hooper, please raise your right hand, face the clerk. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, <coughs> and nothing but the truth shall be God? Mr. Hooper, go ahead and have a seat there, please. And sir, if you'll face me, I need to ask you a few questions. Can you state your name for the record, please? Colin Hooper. Mr. Hooper, you're presently under sentence uh, of a life term of imprisonment, is that correct? Yes, sir. And your case is on appeal, is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you have an attorney representing you on that appeal? Kevin Holtz. Kevin Holtz? Yes, sir. And have you talked with Kevin Holtz regarding your testifying in this trial today? Um, no, sir. You have not? Not today, no, sir. And previously at any time? Um, yes, sir. We were in, um, I wasn't going to testify. Today I decided to. And you've talked that over with your attorney? No, sir. You have not? but it's your decision to testify here today? Yes, sir. You feel the need to talk to an attorney before you testify? No, sir. You're prepared to testify? Yes, sir. Are you doing that of your own free will? Yes, sir. Has anybody threatened you in any way to get you to come to court to testify? No, sir. Has anybody made you any promises to get you to, to testify? No, sir. Are you presently under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? No, sir. Are you taking any medication? No, sir. And it's your decision of your own free will to testify in this trial? Yes, sir. Are you doing that because that's what you want to do? Yes, sir. Very well. And please have the jury return to the courtroom. And Mr. Hooper, I'm going to have you sworn in again in the presence of the jury. Yes, sir. Mr. Hooper, if you'll remain standing, please raise your right hand, face the clerk. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? Yes, sir. Please be seated. Good afternoon, Mr. Hooper. You might need to scoot forward and talk right into that microphone, okay? Could you tell the jury your name? Carl Hooper. How old are you, Mr. Hooper? Nineteen. Are you currently in prison for the part that you played in the murder of Seth Jackson? Yes, ma'am. How did you know Seth Jackson? We uh, we used to be friends at one time. Uh, we'd be staying out at the skate park and uh, through the neighborhood I met him through my sister. Okay, and, it, and what's your sister's name? Amber Wright. Right. Now you and Amber have the same biological parents, right? Yes, ma'am. And who are they? Tracy Wright and Dwayne Hooper. Okay. But you guys have different last names? Yes, ma'am. Did you grow up mostly living with your dad, Dwayne Hooper? Yes, ma'am. Okay. In the spring of 2011, where were you living? Spring of 2011, um, I was living with my mother and then I moved, um, uh, then I moved over to Charlie Ely's house. When you were, before you moved to Charlie Ely's house, you were living at home with your mom. My mother and father, yes ma'am. Okay, and your father, Dwayne Hooper, was living there also at that yes. time. Yes ma'am. And, and your sister, Amber Wright? Yes ma'am. Okay. Were you in school at that time or were you working? I was working. And where were you working? McDonald's. And how long, when did you start working at McDonald's? Um, probably th three months prior before the murder. And uh, when you got hired at McDonald's, did they do drug testing on you, Mr. Hooper? No, ma'am. Um, at some point, did you move out of your mom's house? Yes, ma'am. 
Why did you do that? Uh, my father and I, we would, um, we'd always argue and fight because of my drug habits and um, I got sick of it and I just left the house. In relation to April 17th, the day Seth was killed, how long before that was it that you moved into Charlie Ely's house? I was probably, probably there about a week and a half, almost two weeks maybe. Okay. When you moved into Charlie's house, who else was living there at the time? Um, Charlie, Justin Soto, and Michael Bargo, and I believe Charlie's cousin was there also. Was that Megan? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Did Megan move out pretty quick? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, did you have a vehicle at that time? No, ma'am. So how would you get back and forth to work, Mr. Hooper? Um, I only lived a couple blocks away from my mom, so I would go to my mom and my mother, and she would drive me back and forth to work. And sometimes James Havens would pick me up or drop me off also. Now, who is James Havens? Um, he used to be with my mom at one time, so we... My sister and I end up calling her stepdad, so you might as well call him like a stepdad. Stepdad, okay. Now, did Amber grow up with him in the household? Because she grew up staying at your mom's mostly, right? Yes, ma'am. And so was, uh, did Amber grow up in the household with James Havens and your mom mostly? Yes, yes ma'am. Now, tell me about how do you know, do you know Michael Bargo? Yes, ma'am. Do you see him in the courtroom today? He's, um, he's sitting um, to the left of me. And what color shirt does he have on? Uh, burgundy shirt. Okay, Your Honor, may the record reflect that Mr. Hooper has identified the defendant, Michael Bargo. The record will so reflect. Now, how do you know Michael Bargo? Um, we used to be friends. Um, he's hanging around the neighborhood and things like that. Okay. Do you know, before Michael Bargo moved in with Charlie Ely, do you know where he was living? Uh, he was, he was living with his grandmother, um, him and his father was, and uh, but he would kind of move around a lot, and he wouldn't really stay home too much. He would kind of bounce from place to place, I guess, okay. with different friends. Did he ever stay at your house with your mom, you and your mom and Amber? Um, he would stay at night a few times um, when he needed a place to stay or whatever. Okay. How long would you say that you had known Michael Bargo? Mm, two and a half, almost three years before. Is. Okay. Did Michael Bargo have problems with um, Seth Jackson when Seth and your sister Amber were dating? Uh, yes, uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't quite like Seth. Um, uh, they would always argue, and um, Seth and her would always argue and fight. And um, I believe Mike was kind of jealous. Um, he had feelings for my sister as well, you know, so that they would always, um, Seth and Mike would always argue back and forth in Facebook and text message and so forth. Okay. So they never got along? No, ma'am. Right. And after a Amber and Seth broke up, did that get even worse? Uh, yes, because uh, my sister started dating Mike. Okay. Did um, you ever hear Michael Bargo threaten to kill Seth Jackson? No. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear the answer. He hasn't answered yet. Um, can I remember prior? Honestly, no. Okay. Um, before, you know, I can't. Right. Did Michael Bargo have a gun, Mr. Hooper? Um, yes, ma'am. What type of gun did Mr. Bargo have? It was a um, 22 revolver. Okay. Do you know where he got it? Um, from some guy he used to work for, I believe. Okay. How often would Michael Bargo have that gun with him? All the time. Um, after he got it, I really didn't see him much without it. Okay. How long before Seth was killed did Michael Bargo get that gun? He had it for he had it for a few months, I believe. He had it for a while. <coughs> I can't really remember how long, but he had it for a while. Okay. Let's talk about Sunday, April seventeenth of two thousand eleven. Okay. Um, who all was living at Charlie Ely's house the day that Seth was killed? Mm, Charlie.
Carly, my Justin, me, and my sister would stay the night. She wasn't living there. Okay. But Amber would spend the night there from time to time? Yes, ma'am. She spend the night there with Michael Bargo? Yes, ma'am. Now, on that Sunday afternoon, were all of you guys there at Charlie Ely's house late Sunday afternoon? Yes, ma'am. And can you tell us what happened that late Sunday afternoon? Uh, I, I got all, um, James had picked me up from work and um, went to Charlie's house where I was living. And James had stayed for a little while and um, we, were, we were all hanging out. Um, and Mike and I, we had a conversation um, about killing Seth. Okay. Can you tell us about that conversation, Mr. Heather? Well, he, um, <sighs> well, we talk, we were talking about, um, Killing him. Um, he wanted to make a plan to do it. Um, I guess because I, I guess he had a, you know, he was having reasons or he wanted to do it. And it came to me because I had um, issues with him too, with Seth also. So Mr. Bargo knew that you had issues with Seth also. Uh, yes, ma'am. And was that over uh, about Alyssa? Um, not till probably about a week, week and a half, maybe two weeks before then. But um, we were having some beef between her and my um, uh, Seth and my sister. Okay. Um, but he uh, he had said that um. Uh, he he come up with this, you know. We would come up with a plan on how we would do it. Okay. And what was the plan? That my sister would. <sighs> that my sister would um. Would go up there and um get Seth because um Seth and Amber did have feelings for each other still, and I knew it would be easy for Amber to persuade. You know, set to come to Charlie's house, and Amber would tell um, Seth that nobody was there; it was just gonna be her and Charlie, and that um, they wanted to talk. You know. Why was it important, Mr. Hooper, for Amber to tell Seth Jackson that only she and Charlie Ely were gonna be at the house? Because Seth wanted had came if if. Uh, she knew that I were there, and and knew if Mike was there also. Why would not? Why would Seth not have come if he knew you and Mike Bargo were going to be there? Um, because we were all beefing. We all. So you guys were all beefing back and forth about fighting and yes, ma'am, jumping each other and that sort of thing. Yes, ma'am. So what was the discussion? Um, what did the defendant tell your sister Amber Wright to do? Um, to go up there to um, go get Seth and um, bring him down to the house, uh, to Charlie's house. Okay, so before they went to get Seth, was there a discussion also where the defendant told you what your role was going to be? Well, uh, yeah, but uh, it didn't happen out that way. Okay. What was what was it? How is it supposed to happen according to Mr. Bargo? Um, Justin was when Seth come into the house. Justin was supposed to hit Seth. Um, I guess with a piece of wood or axe hand or something like that, and then I would. Mike and I would follow out behind him, and of course we would jump on him, and then Mike would shoot him. Okay. 
but you said it didn't happen that way. Oh, man. So what happened? Uh, when Seth came, uh, when Amber and um, Charlie went to go get Seth and brought him to the house, uh, Charlie's house, uh, Justin, when he came in, Justin didn't have a, uh, Justin didn't do anything. He didn't hit him or anything like that. And at that time, Mike and I, we were sitting in his room and we were having a discussion. What discussion were you? You were you and Ms. Michael Bargo were sitting in Michael Bargo's room. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what discussion were you having in the room? We had a discussion that um. Well, we were wait we were supposed to be waiting on Amber's text to tell us when, like, when he was down the road so we can get ready. And during that time, even before Seth had came into the house, and even after we were having a discussion. Um, I had told him, you know, I didn't feel right about doing it, and he, uh, and he was bringing back from, you know, things that he has done to me, you know, done to him, and, you know, done to me, and why I should do it. You so know. Mr. Bargo was bringing back up to you things that Seth had done to you to encourage you to carry through with the plan? Yes, ma'am. And what was he saying to you, Mr. Hooper? He said, um think about what he has done, you know, he said he would sleep with your girl and, you know, he vandalized my house and, you know, and tried to jump me and things like that, you know, and, um. So would you say he was egging you on? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so after that conversation in the room, what did you do? Well, Seth, well, Seth was sitting in the uh, in the chair in the living room and I could see him and finally worked up to the nerve after nerve after being pressured a little bit and um got a piece of wood from the door frame that was knocked down from Mike's room and I ran out out of the room and I set stood up and I hit him in the head with it and then um I turned around and Mike was coming out the room with, a, with his gun in his hand, and I uh, and I told, turned to Seth and I told him to get the fuck out of the house. Seth started running towards the kitchen. And Mike started shooting. So did Michael Bargo shoot Seth Jackson in Charlie Ely's house? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then did Seth actually get out of the house? This man, uh, he ran out the uh, front door and went down the steps, and Justin ran after him and had tackled him, and then Mike had ran out there and had shot him one more time, and um, he then he yelled for me to come out and to help. Did he do that? <sighs> yes, ma'am. I ran out there, and I, I helped Mike bring set them into the house and we put them into the bathtub. Okay. Let me ask you this, Mr. Hooper. Was there anything on the kitchen floor that was laid out? Um, not that I, not, not that I can remember, no. Did y'all have a sleeping bag somewhere? Um, yes, um, uh, might need it, I guess, well, he was asking for something to put them in. And Charlie said she had a sleeping bag and she had brought it to him. And that's what he had, him and Justin had put him in with sleeping bag. So what happened, Mr. Hooper, after you and Justin Soto and Michael Bargo put Seth Jackson into the bathtub? Uh, well, he told, Mike had told me to go and uh, help my sister and Charlie clean up the kitchen and the living room, things, you know, and, um, uh, what needed to be cleaned up in the kitchen? I guess, in this case, if there was any blood, anything like that, and we had, ble we had bleach in the house, so we would clean up with the bleach. Okay. So anything else happened there in the, in the bathtub? Uh, well, as I was helping my sister and Charlie clean up, uh, Mike had, uh, I heard more uh, shots go off 
and I ran into the bathroom to see what was going on and Mike shot him a few more times and he was yelling at him and uh what was he yelling I, I don't remember he was, he was he was a bunch of cuss words and things like that you know he was just I don't remember what he was saying. It was just he was yelling at him. He was cussing at him, and and um, I think I believe he was remembering him hitting. He hit him a few more. He hit him a few times also. I shot him and I told him, you know, to stop, you know, because it was neighbors. You know, I told him to stop, and so he eventually stopped. And uh. We, uh, well, after that, after a little while, um, Mike and Justin had put Seth into a sleeping bag. We already had the fire outside going. When did y'all start the fire, Mr. Hooper? Um, it wasn't too long after I got home. I uh, went to well, Charlie's house. Um, Before Seth got there? Yes, ma'am. Um... Had Michael Bargo told you before Seth <coughs> got there what his plan was um, to dispose of Seth's body? He said he was going to, um, the next day, um, he was going to bring him, um, him, Justin, and uh, James was going to bring him to the, um, to the rock quarry, so to some type of rock quarry. And... They were going to dump them off in, in the rock quarry. Had Michael Bargo told you ahead of time what he was going to do to Seth when he got him in the back in the house? Um, not that I can, no, not that I can remember because it wasn't, he, he wasn't supposed to go outside the house. He was supposed to stay in the house. Did Michael, had Michael Bargo told you what he had planned to do to Seth? Once he got subdued in the house. Um. Well, once we were originally once we got him into the house, um. And and we were supposed to rough him up, and you know Mike wanted him still alive, and we wanted to put him in the bathroom. He wanted to put him in the bathroom, in the bathtub, and he wanted him to be still alive, so he could you know. You know, shoot him. You know, while you're still alive. You know, let him face to face. I guess I, I don't know. So uh, Seth would know who it was that killed him. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Mr. Hooper, did you help take Seth's body out to the fire in the backyard? I didn't. I didn't help, but I um, I stayed out there. During the night, and I helped tend the fire. Yes, I did do that. What happened to the stick that you hit Seth with? Uh, it got disposed in the uh, in the burn pile. Okay. What did Michael Bargo do with the gun that he used to shoot Seth? He yeah, threw it into the uh, air conditioning duct um, in the house. So were you up most of the night? Uh, Ten in the fire. Uh, pretty much, you know. Um, and then I went to bed probably around two thirty or so because I had to get up for work. And was uh, Michael Bargo out there at the fire with you as well? Uh, no. Eventually, him and my sister went into the went to the house and they went to bed. Um, Justin and I we were kind of taking turns from staying out there. So at at some point you went to bed. Yes, ma'am. Um, and did you get up the next morning to go to work? Uh, yes, ma'am. And how did you get to work, Mr. Hooper? Um, I went to uh, Mike Amber and I went to my mom's house. Um, she dropped me off at work. Okay. And what time did you have to work that day? Do you remember? Um, about 10, I had to go to work probably around 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I didn't get off until probably 5, 30, 6 o'clock that afternoon. Did Michael Bargo tell you what he planned to do on Monday with Seth Jackson's body? 
who's who was supposed to be in the in in, in the rock quarry. Um, while I was at work, he was supposed to take him to the rock quarry. Okay, and who was supposed to help him do that? Justin and um, James. James Havens. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, had you guys discussed that with James Havens the night before? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, he had he had left um, before um, before the murder happened. So. At some point while you were at work, Mr. Hooper, did Michael Bargo and James Havens come to your work to get money for gas from you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, when I ca I went to the Walmart to cash my check and I, I gave him money to go get um for gas and to go get me a uh, car in the Newports. Now, when um, you got off work that day, what did you do? Uh, well, Mike and um, James had picked me up. <laughs> At my job, which I thought my mom was supposed to come pick me up, and um, I was on the ride home, uh, Mike had told me that um, the police were looking for him, and they were in front of my mom's house, and uh, he would drop me off at the Quick King on the corner, um, and he asked me for some. Uh, I remember him asking me for some money so he can, um, for gas money, um, so James could help him leave town. And, uh, I don't remember if I gave him money or not, but, um, I, he dropped me off at a quick king, James did. And, um, Mike had told me to go to his father and tell him that he had, you know, that we had killed Seth. So I would. I went on the way home, I had to go past his house, Mike's house, my uh, grandparents' house, where Mike's father was staying. And Mike was, uh, Mike Sr. was out there cleaning his girlfriend's car, I believe. It was his girlfriend's. And I told him what had happened. And then his grandma pulled into the driveway, and Mike Sr. had told me to tell his grandmother what had happened. And I did, and then at that time, um, well, Samuel, uh, Sam Lott had pulled up in front of um, my grandmother's house and was asking for Seth, and I didn't, I didn't, I told him I didn't know wh uh, where he was, so he had took off, and I had went to my mom's house to see what was going on, and the police were out there, and, and they asked a few questions, um, like did I know him and things like that, and. Um, then I, they searched my mom's house and they left and I stayed with um, my mother and my um, my dad that night and so did um, Charlie and Amber. So you and Charlie and Amber all spent the night at your mom's house that night? Yes ma'am. Okay. Um, now when you woke up the next morning or did you sleep that night? Yeah, it was a restless night. Okay. Did you um, tell your mom what had happened, Kyle, when you woke up the next morning? Uh, yes, I did. Um, after she got done dropping my dad off at work, I was outside um, smoking a cigarette, and my mom came through the gate, and she got off the phone, and she had questioned me <coughs> about what Mike was talking about yesterday when she had dropped me off at work um, about... Mike was talking about a burn pile or, or some bullets or something like that, and he had asked my mom, "Would you still love me if um, if I did something bad?" And um, my mom had told me this, and she sort of questioning me about it, and I broke down and I had told my mom what had happened. Now, do you have a relative that works in law enforcement somewhere else in Florida? Uh, my uncle Robbie Knapp, who lives in Hollywood, uh, who lives in Fort Lauderdale, but he works for the Hollywood the Police Department as a detective. Now, did you call your uncle Rob, Robert uh, Knapp, and tell him what had happened? Uh, yes, ma'am, and he had um, suggested that I um, had called the, had my mom call the police, 
and tell them what had happened. Okay, and did you do that? Uh, yes, ma'am. So the police came on Tuesday morning and they took you? My sister and Justin sister, and Charlie. Justin and Charlie to the police. And you were arrested that day? Yes, ma'am. That Saturday or Sunday, that weekend, Mr. Hooper, um, did you have a conversation with Michael Bargo um, about a new tattoo that he had gotten or was getting? Uh, I, I don't remember. Um, if it was, uh, I think it was a tattoo of uh, my sister or something like that on, on his thigh or something. I don't remember. Did he reference any tattoos that he had on his face? Uh, yeah, he uh, he had uh, did it himself. He tattooed a couple of teardrops on his under his eyes. And why did he do that? Um, did he tell you why he did that? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Overruled. Yeah, told me because uh, I guess back in Detroit, um, something had happened uh, with a friend of his, and one of them, I guess, filled in or something like that would mean um, he lost a friend or whatever. And then the other one was that was not filled in or filled in. I don't I don't remember. Meant that um, he had uh, he had killed somebody, something like that. Yes, ma'am. And when did he need to get that new tattoo? Uh, he had actually done that before, beforehand. Was it the day before Seth was killed? Uh, I don't I don't remember exactly if it was the day before, um, or a few days before, but it was before. I remember. I don't have any other questions. <coughs> Cross examination. Please court. You actually sent out a text saying that you were going to kill Seth Jackson, didn't you? To Alyssa Masters? Mm hmm. Uh, I did this uh, the night. Yes or no? Did you send it out? Yes, sir. When did you send it out? I sent it out a week beforehand. Um, before this even happened, right? Before that even happened, yes, sir, I did. As a matter of fact, um, what had happened with Alyssa? What had you discovered? She was, uh, I, I went to her house, and I had discovered her and Seth in bed together. And you'd been there before, hadn't you? Uh, he has, yes, sir. Since you've broken up, right? Yes, sir. You even crawled up on the air conditioning unit and stuff like that, right? Oh. You? I never did none of that. I never crawled up on no air conditioning unit, none of that. Well, you were lurking around her house after y'all broke up, right? No, m no, sir. Uh, she had called me over there because we were supposed to hang out, and she would lie to me the, to me the whole night saying she would come out and hang out with me, but she was uh, had to take care of the kids and before they go to bed and help her mom fold clothes and then she told me Seth was there and I told him either he goes or I go uh, you know because she knew him and I didn't get along and I had made a remark to her that do you want me to go to jail tonight and what was that remark supposed to mean uh, supposed to mean uh, fighting them you know if I had seen him, I was gonna fight him. And um, and then she had told me that he would have him leave the house, and give him give her a little while. So I had walked a couple blocks, and I had went back because in some part of me I didn't believe she had let him. She had him leave because I never seen him leave the house. And I went on the side yard, and I seen them her air conditioning, the side on the air conditioning unit was pulled over and her bed is right there in front and the lights were off and I see them in bed together. 
That wasn't a very pleasant feeling, was it? Made you angry? Um, I admit, yes, sir. I was. I was very angry. Gentlemen. And you went back, when you got back to Healy's house, you were pretty freaked out about that, weren't you? Mm, yes, sir. How did you get back to her house? Uh, I walked back to my house. I walked back. Didn't ride a bicycle or anything like that? Not that I, not that I can recall or remember. Think carefully about that. Uh, not that I, I don't remember. <coughs> so your answer is you don't remember. You could have, you may have, but you may not have. Right? Yes, sir. I don't remember. In all fairness. When you got back, did you talk to Michael Bargo about that? Um, I told her, I, I believe I uh, told him that I, I was pretty upset about it and I was angry about it, yes, sir. Do you, him, do you remember you pretty much in a rage about it, telling him you'll kill the son of a bitch and stuff like that, or some or words to that effect? Yes, but I was very angry. Um, and didn't really mean that I wanted to do it. I was just angry. We get angry. We say things, sir. Now, this episode, this discovery of Alyssa and Seth, this was approximately, what, a week before it happened? About a week, so yes. As opposed to the conflict that Mike had with Seth, which was about, what, a month, a month and a half prior, right? Uh oh, they've been. Mm, there was mm, even before then, a week before then, and so forth. They were. Uh, he would point the gun outside and things like that, and have set. And uh, William was riding around the neighborhood, and he was shooting at him. Oh, uh, he would pretend, or he would actually. Uh, they'd no. ride around the neighborhood, and he'd shoot at him. No, he was, they were actually riding around the neighborhood, and Mike was actually out the wind, point the gun out the window, and shoot at him. For real? For real. Well, what do you think of that? Mm. I mean, you were there. I was there, yes, sir. You saw it, right? Yes, sir. Did you th think about calling the police? No, sir. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I just didn't call the police. I didn't think nothing of it. Ain't nothing serious of it. Why, why did you not think anything serious of it? How much more serious can it get? And he was, they were on, on a whole nother block from us. And I didn't think Mike would actually hit him or anything like that. And it was supposed to be funny, a joke. It was supposed to be, it was supposed to scare him a little bit also. It wasn't nothing serious or harmful. Supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to be. We all were all together in interrogation. Did you ever make the comment or hear the comment made that, um, the only thing we have left is just blame this all on Mike. You know, no, I, don't, I don't remember that, sir. You think he could have? Could you have said that? Um, Mike had told me, and oh, I could had, you have said I that? Could have could said, you that? Have said that. I remember saying that Mike had told me to, if if the police came and things like that, to tell him, to tell the police that he had done it. Yes, and and that and and that's what I did, but not on, but. Uh, Rhonda Stroud had told me that uh, to tell her the truth about what I had. Um, that's not my question. Let me redirect you. Okay. okay. My question is, could you have said the only thing we have left to do is pin it on Mike? I don't remember saying that, no. May you have said that? May I have? Yes, but there's a lot of things I don't remember. Yes, sir. Why is there a lot of things you don't remember? There's a lot of things said. I remember the... Is it just faded memory or is it mental disease or defect or something like that? No, seriously, I'm serious. Do you have cognitive problems, memory problems? No, sir. What about Soto? Soto, when Seth ran outside trying to escape after being shot, was it in fact you and Soto that chased him down? No, Soto ran out the house and tackled him. And Mike went out after him, and then after Mike had shot him again, wait, shot him again outside or inside? Outside. Okay. I, I said that before. And what, what what were you doing at that point in time? I was in the living room, and Mike had called for me, and I had ran out to go call for me to go help, and I had ran out there to help. So you did run outside, right? I did run outside, yes, sir. 
Were you drunk or were you high or whatever? Or both? Both. What were you on? Um, I think we were smoking weed and I think we drank a little bit that night. And what was everybody else doing? Well, I think was we, start off, so what's we, all, we were all pretty much doing the same thing. You know, we, were, we were all doing the same thing. Who threw the body on the fire in the sleeping bag? Mike and Justin. You didn't have anything to do with that, right? No, sir. I stayed out there and I tended the fire, yes. You stayed out there tending the fire knowing that a body had been thrown into it? Yes, sir. And knowing that whose body had been thrown into it? Yes, sir. How did you feel about that at the time? <sighs> honestly? Yeah, honestly. I really didn't think nothing of it at the time. Okay. At least that's an honest answer. I don't have any further questions. I tend to the witness. Redirect. Just briefly, a couple questions. Mr. Hooper, when um, this all started and you hit Seth with the stick, where did the girls go? They have ran into Charlie Ely's room. So the only two people that saw Michael Bargo shoot Seth Jackson were you and Justin Soto? Yes, ma'am. No. I don't have any other questions. Recross. No, May this witness be excused, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Holloman? No objection. You're excused, sir. You may step down. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to address some scheduling matters with the attorneys. I'm going to ask you to retire briefly from the courtroom, please. Noting that the jury has retired from the courtroom, does the state have any further rebuttal testimony? No, Your Honor. Does the defense have any sir rebuttal? Uh, the defendant has indicated that he may, he may have something that is sir rebuttal. Judge, I, I haven't been able to talk to him out here loud. It's not very, it's not very long. I, 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 don't, I do not know whether it's sir rebuttal or not because he only gave me a hint of what it was. And Judge, we would ask that that be proffered. Oh, uh, well, I totally agree. Let me ask you to do this. Let me go ask, ask you to go into the holding cell to confer with your client okay. and then return to the courtroom as soon as you are able to do so.
Putting the defendant's return to the courtroom accompanied by his attorneys, Mr. Holloman, do you have any sir rebuttal evidence to present? I'd like to proffer sir rebuttal evidence, but I don't want to proffer it um, as the attorney proffering it under the circumstances. I was concerned that the bar is going to take the stand because of the two that may very well be a rebuttal evidence. There are certain things we could not talk about before until Mr. Cooper testifies. You can proffer that to me. I apologize. I had meant that you as the attorney can proffer that to me so that I understand what the nature of the evidence would be. Um, there were several hearsay things, several hearsay objections that were lodged during his testimony, Judge, about what Mr. Hooper had told him about the plan and his understanding of it, as well as his actions as to what he explained he had done. And that's what Mr. Fargo's rebuttal testimony would be about. It would be about what he was told by what, Kyle Hooper. What he... Mr. Bargo was told by Kyle Hooper? Yes, and, and what he said his actions were, and what he said the plan was, and what he said had happened. They are admissions against interest, and they're certainly admissions against his opinion, Judge. Does the state have any argument? So Mr. Bargo is going to testify about what Kyle Hooper told him? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, that would only be admissible if they had impeached Kyle Hooper with not having made that statement prior. I mean, it's... In an abundance of caution for that limited scope, I'm going to allow that testimony, but it will be only regarding that limited issue. You understand that, Mr. Barger? I'm sorry. Yes. yes. We're not going any further afield other than what was just discussed. I told him to be narrow, Judge. And I suggest you may be able to conduct that on a standard direct examination. I have one. I don't have a question. I'm going to ask him a question. I'm going to ask you. I'm just covering what he told you. That's it. Okay. Did you understand my last comment, Mr. Holloman? I suggest that you may be able to accomplish that through a standard direct examination of questions and answers as opposed to a narrative to accomplish the mission of limiting the scope to that issue. I'll do that at the direction of the court, Judge. Thank you. Yes, sir. That is at the direction of the court. Please have the jury return to the courtroom. One second. One second, Tamara. There will be no further testimony presented. Is that correct? That's from the state? Yes, ma'am. No, there's no further testimony. No additional sir rebuttal is being requested. Is that correct? That's correct. Counsel, I note the time is 3.17 p.m. Members of the jury, at this time the defense is going to present some brief testimony which is referred to as sir rebuttal testimony. Mr. Holloman, you may call your witness. Sir, if you'll come back up to the witness stand, please.
raise your right hand and say so please. Yes, ma'am. Please be seated. Up the microphone, please. Identify yourself for the record. Michael Shane Bargo Jr. You realize you're under oath at this time, you're previously under oath, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, when you arrived back at the house, you had a conversation. I did. You referenced earlier with a person known to you as Kyle Hooper. Yes, sir. Uh, what did he tell you had happened? When we went back into my bedroom after meeting him outside, he sat me down. He told me, he said, Mike, I need to talk to you. I said, all right. I said, what? He said, look, man, as soon as you left, my life, shit got bad. And I looked at him, you know, you know, what do you mean when I left? I mean, you know, he, my face is all messed up. And he's, well, I asked him, you know, he told me, just, just let me finish. Just let me finish. I said, all right. He got to telling me this, just this, this crazy story. He said him and Soto were in the bathroom after I left. You know, after I left, they left the fire. They came inside. They went in the bathroom. So while they were in, while they were in the bathroom, you know, doing drugs in the bathroom, he said they heard a noise come out from, from out in the living room. So when he heard the noise come out in the living room, he grabbed the gun underneath the sink, and he put it in his waistband. He said him and Soto came out. When they came out, he, he seen Seth sitting out in the living room. Well, he said he just went off. He said he went off and went over there, you know. Get who's he? Who's he? Kyle Hooper. Okay. Kyle said he went out there and he told, you know, told Seth, get the, out the house. Death out the house. And he wouldn't leave. He said the girls came out. He demanded that they go in the bedroom. And they went back in the bedroom. And he's sitting here. And he said he said he told Seth, leave. You know, get out of the house, get out of the house. And Seth said he wasn't leaving until, he said that Seth said he wasn't leaving until, until he talked to Amber. I, what he said. Something got said about Alyssa and, and it just, he said it, it blew up. Something about Alyssa and he wouldn't leave. Well, Kyle got mad so he tried to grab him to make him leave. He said, so when he grabbed him to make him leave, he said Seth punched him or hit him a fight ensued, like they got into a tussle and they ended up on the ground. He said Seth was on top of him and was, I don't know exactly what he said, he was hitting him or choking him or, or punching him. He said Seth was on top of him, just beating him. He said Soto hit him over the head with a stick. He said the stick broke off in, in two pieces. He said the stick broke off. He said Seth rolled over onto the stick. He said that him, he said he got up and Seth got up, except Seth got up with his stick. He said that he pulled the gun out on him and started shooting him. He said, said, dropped the stick, ran out the house. said, he ran behind him with Soto behind him, tackled him in the front yard. said, he said he shot him again, yelled for Soto to help him carry him back inside. So they carried him back inside and they set him on the kitchen floor. He said, when they set him on the kitchen floor, that there was, he was getting, I think he said, he was getting, there, was, there was blood on the floor or something. And he said, somebody was freaking out and they didn't know what to do. So one of them decided to carry him and put him in. The bathtub, I guess. So he put him in the bathtub, and he he told me he told me that he that he when he put him in the bathtub, he heard a noise and coming from Seth, and that he didn't know what it was. So he and he he said and what he told me was is that he came too far, and he it, it was it was too late. He said he then shot him a couple more times in the head. Said he. And Cross examination. Cross examination. No, you're on. No. Right. You may step down. The best rest at this point, Your Honor, will our previously made motion within anticipate the same ruling by the court. The same ruling as was made previously is entered by the court at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I, when I arrived at the courthouse today, I thought you were going to hear a closing argument. Obviously, that did not take place. No one can predict with 100% certainty the course of any trial, and obviously we have had further testimony and, and evidence presented today. I am confident that the attorneys had tailored their closing argument regarding all of the evidence that had been presented up until the conclusion of uh, the evidence presentation last Friday. As there has been additional evidence presented, I am going to afford the attorneys time to tailor their 
closing argument accordingly. Accordingly, we're going to take a, an overnight recess at this time. When you retire from the courtroom, I'm going to ask you to uh, give those notepads to the bailiff who will maintain them securely overnight. We'll use the same procedure we've been utilizing during the course of the trial. I'll ask you to report promptly tomorrow morning at 10 minutes before 9. Thank you. You may retire with the bailiff. Tomorrow will be the closing arguments. Council, are there any matters that need to be addressed before we retire for the evening? Nothing on behalf of the defense team. Nothing from the state. Very well. We'll be in recess until 10 before 9 tomorrow morning. We are adjourned. You got this. State's prepared to defend it. Defend it. Yes, ma'am.